What's going on guys and welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be breaking down why remote workers are overemployed and then how to actually work two remote jobs at the same exact time. You may be wondering, what the heck is this chart? Well, this chart is going to help direct us throughout this entire video. Essentially, it's a what, why, and how chart. First, we're going to be touching on what. So what is 2xing? What exactly is going on here? That part will be brief, quick, nitty gritty to the point. Why? We'll be, diving, we'll be diving in a bit more on why people are doing this. Why are they overemployed? Why are they stacking jobs? And then probably the most important part, the strategy and the tactic. People are wondering, how can you do this? What are the rules? What are the steps? Let's just dive right into it, okay? So what? We'll do a brief explanation on this. So what is overemployed? What is working two remote jobs? The majority of the time, what it is, is you are working two, two times, two W-2 salaried jobs, right? So if you have a full-time job right now, it would be like if you got another full-time job and how this works is you do it remotely because you can't do it in person. If you were to do two in-person jobs at the same exact time, that would be 40 hours because it's a full-time job plus 40 hours equals 80 hours, right? And that's not what we're going for. That is not the goal here whatsoever. We don't want you completely working yourself to the bone and doing 80 plus hours per week. The whole goal with working two remote jobs at the same time is this thing called real working time. That's what makes us work, right? We've all worked full-time jobs. I've worked in let's say food business before, some people here watching have, you might work with your hands like four hours out of the day and the next thing you know, there's so much free time. And that's really what makes this plausible. Real working time, if you have a remote job, it takes 20 hours to get that job done per week. You could stack another one and then that full-time job takes another 20 hours of work per week and next thing you know, you're real working time is 40 hours per week and you're getting paid two salaries. So that's what it is. Now coming on over into the why part of our chart. Why do this? Why are people becoming overemployed? Why are people working multiple remote jobs? All right, diving right into it. And the why is fairly simple, something everyone watching this can probably relate with. It's money. <laughs> Simply put, why are people doing this? They want to make more money. Now, breaking that down further, why do they want to make more money? Some people have debt. Some people are finding themselves in rat race wages, right? You have a remote job or you have a job, but then at the end of the month, you look in your bank account and you didn't save anything. These are the real reasons why people are doing this. There's nothing bad or malicious behind it. It's just we need money and we want to be able to survive and thrive and not just barely scrape and get by. A quick story for you. For me, I started off in my working career, one of my first jobs as a traveling maid. Literally like with, with a toilet brush, traveling around house to house. Here's, here's, a, little, here's a little house for you house to house, actually cleaning toilets. I think reflecting back on it now, I got like a couple hundred dollars a week or bi-weekly, something like that. And then I also like made sandwiches and that got me a couple hundred dollars here and there. And it was terrible. I was working like crazy. So what did I do? I knew that, okay, my skills of toilet cleaning and sandwich making weren't going to make me an awful lot of money. And my goal was just to make money, save it, and then I can invest in things and then and then take care of my, me and my family. 
So what's the game plan here? Why, why was I able to do this? I was able to do this because I understood that companies are looking for skills. So things like coding, things like being good with money, like bookkeeping. I'm not good at any of these, but I am creative. I can, I can make videos, I can make content, and this is really what I leaned into. Now, once I learned the skill, I built my portfolio, I got one remote job, and then I got two remote jobs, and things have not been better. I can now pay my rent, I can now look for multiple remote jobs if I want, if I want to go three, I can do that, and I've even been able to start a business. So why are people doing this? Money, to pay down debt. We're all sick of just surviving, we want to thrive. And it's something we can all relate with. I'm sure you can relate with this story a bit, but the real nitty gritty of this video is the how. How the heck, like you're like, okay, I understand what it is. I understand why people are doing it, but how the heck are people actually doing it? All right, so since working two remote jobs lets you double your salary without actually doubling your work, how do we do that? Well, here, I'll get rid of that bullet point. There's actually two parts to this how. Part one of this how, ooh, there we go, that was disgusting. This is actually how to get jobs. So how to get jobs is the first how. And then part two of the how is how to, how to keep jobs. There are two very important things to be focused on. Let's start with part one, which is actually getting the jobs. Now, to get the jobs, it's a fairly simple acronym. If we, if we want to get the jobs, we have to SAG. What does this mean? Well, if we want to get jobs, we have to have skills. We have to be focused on our assets. And we also are going to need to grind. Let's start here with the first part of SAG, which is S, skills. Referencing back to just my story here, what did I do? I had skills, cleaning toilets and making sandwiches. I understood that, here, let me get rid of this house. It was just clean houses and it didn't didn't hold on. So I had these skills. And did these skills equate to money? No. I needed to do some research on what skills am I good at, right? I'm not good at coding. I don't have an analytical mind, but I do have a creative mind. Okay. In the creative sphere of things, what brings in money? And it's like, okay, I could be a director of something. I could make graphics for fintech companies. I could, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I built, I built my skills up after doing that research. And I decided, okay, I'm going to find some creative skills because one, I'm good at them just naturally. It's not gonna be hard for me, right? If it's extremely difficult for you to learn coding, like for me, it's a nightmare and it's a drain, so I'm not doing it. But doing something that's creative is super easy to me, so I do it and it comes more naturally. So I'm good at these things. And then I also picked fields where I can level up and make a lot of money. Maybe not short term, but if I'm a manager or a director, that's where the money comes in for my specific creative field. So how did I learn the skill? I studied on YouTube, I bought some courses, I got some mentorship, and then I built a portfolio, and that's how you learn, how you pick and then learn a skill, SAG. And then assets. I chose a creative field. When I did some research, I figured, I figured out, okay, if my field is very visual, like graphics and creative work, I need to have a portfolio of work. What does that portfolio of work look like? I'm going to need to host it on Google Drive. It's going to need to be public. And then I'm going to need to sort out the rest of my application assets. What do these look like? 
one. I need here. Let me clear out some of this, some of this stuff for you. Just remember, you need to be good at the skills. Hopefully, it comes naturally to you. That's the easy way to go about it. And make sure you can make money doing it. I'll, I'll make a zero up here. There you go. You need to make money. So first, for the assets, you want to make sure you have an ATS optimized resume. What is ATS? It's the robot that automatically rejects you with every single job. You have to make keywords fit on your resume that make the job posts you're applying to happy. So then they send you to a human being. So make sure you ATS optimize your resume, put a video on your cover letter, talking about yourself, kind of like I am here, but show your face and talk about your skills, how you can help them out. So then when you get to a human, they're like, wow, nobody ever does this. Make your portfolio of work, if you need one, super easy to access. And if you do these three bare minimum, you should be able to, to get away with getting into interview rounds for most positions. Then onto the G in SAG, we got skills, we got assets, and now we need to grind. There's, there's no, uh, there's no if, ands, or buts about this one. Like maybe you have tons of experience here and it's super easy for you and you might not need to do a lot of these. It's fine. You might already have tons of skills. It's fine. Every one of us is going to need to grind, grind it out when we're applying for jobs. So a good place to start might be, I would say LinkedIn. There's less job scams on LinkedIn. There's way more job scams on Indeed. And if you're looking to figure out how can you figure out what's a job scam and what's not, I'm, I'm going to continue posting videos on this channel and our program to help you learn the, those things. But I would say first and foremost, start with LinkedIn and just grind it out. Set on your actual schedule when you'll be applying for these jobs, that time slot, that time slot, and do it every single day. Look for the exact specific keyword like this in quotes in the search bar on LinkedIn to really zone in on your skill so then you can use your assets to grind it out and sag and get the job. And can't forget about part two. This is how to keep the job once you actually get it. So what are some things you can do to keep the job? A lot of people say, just coast and go under the reader. I hate that nonsense. It's so, so dumb. You're going to get fired. Here's what I suggest doing. Get your work done. Okay. Don't do any of this quiet quitting nonsense BS. It's just don't do it. Get your work done. Get it in on time. You don't need to go above and beyond if you don't want to, obviously, right? Just get your work done, get it in on time. Another big one. Show up to your meetings. There's a lot less leniency nowadays, especially if it's a new remote job. If you miss a meeting, they're gonna be like, what are you doing? You're literally at your home and you're missing our meetings. If it's the beginning of your new job and you're start already giving excuses, oh, I have this doctor's appointment or oh, I can't, I can't be there. These are huge red flags. And all you need to do to keep your job is really just get your work in on time, show up to meetings. And then another huge one is don't tell people what you're doing. <laughs> Colleagues, friends, just keep it to your chest. I know you probably won't be able to, but, but think about it like this. Have you ever seen a show like Survivor? If you've never seen Survivor, it's basically where these people play against each other. It's something like outwit, outplay, outlast. And there are these things called immunity idols, where if you find an immunity idol, you're not su really supposed to tell people, you're supposed to keep it a secret, because if you have an immunity idol, you're a threat and people can vote you off the island because they see you as a threat. What you're basically doing here, if you're telling people, wow, I have two remote jobs, they'll go, wow, that's great. But then behind your back, they're going to tell other people and be like, oh, Tim has two remote jobs. 
isn't that awful. And then you're going to get fired. Same thing like people with the immunity idol. If they're telling people, people are going to be like, wow, this is great. Awesome. And then they're going to get voted off the island because they're a threat with the idol. Don't tell people, get your work done, show up to meetings, and you should be all good to go. Let me know in the, um, in the comments below what you'd like to see next, what type of video. And if you're looking to learn how to, here, I'll do a little arrow up here. If you're looking to learn how to land more remote job interviews, check out our program either up there or down here. Should be the first link in the description below. And that'll help you land more remote job interviews in just 14 days. Don't forget to like and comment and I'll catch you on the next one.